Hello and welcome again to our study of the people of the Old Testament. I'm excited to be with you again this week. Um, last week, if you remember last week, we talked about Ezra, a man who God called and gave the responsibility to go back to rebuild the temple itself in Jerusalem. If you remember, Ezra was living during a time when uh, Israel had been captive and they were being really held in other countries, not their own. And so Ezra, Ezra felt really the burden to go back to his home area to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple and that's what he did. And uh, this week we're going to meet a person who was a friend with Ezra and who also had a burden, a little bit different, but also in that in that same place back in Jerusalem in Israel and uh, we'll see him in just a little bit but let's pray and then we'll begin Heavenly Father here we are again we need you again every time we open the Bible we need your help and we pray that today as we study these words from the Bible this story that you will reach down and touch our heart and help us to to really to learn some things yes but also not only to learn to become increased in knowledge but also to increase in our character as we read the story about Nehemiah uh, today I pray that you would help us to learn from his life and testimony today. Help it to change us and help us to become more committed to what you will touch our hearts to do today and going forward. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we by, by way of review already, we talked about Ezra. A good friend of his was named Nehemiah. I'm going to give him the sign name of Nehemiah. Why? Because he was a builder. Nehemiah with, with ends. That would be a sign name for him for today. Uh, Nehemiah is a man that God called very specifically to use. At the same time that Ezra was alive, same was Nehemiah. They really were friends. They knew each other. And they worked together together. Um, there's a there's a book with Nehemiah's name on it and that's the book we'll be studying today if you have your Bible uh, would you open to the Old Testament book of Nehemiah it's a wonderful wonderful story it's a wonderful book it's filled with good applications for us for today and so I hope you'll open your Bible and you'll just stay right with me uh, today as I teach you these this story we're going to condense. I, I, we don't have enough time, as is true every week. We don't have time to really study the depth of each person. But I want to introduce you to the people. And so today I want you to meet and, become, and know Nehemiah himself, a wonderful person. We begin by seeing Nehemiah. He had a great responsibility. The Bible tells us that he was the cup bearer. What does it mean? You'll see he's holding a cup here. What does it mean he is the cup bearer? Well really he was very very important to the king. Uh, he was alive during the time of this king. You see that's kind of a strange name but Artaxerxes and then Longimaeus was his name. I guess that's how you say it. I don't know. Uh, but when, when Nehemiah was a young man, he was taken from Israel and he was moved to this country. He became a servant to the king himself. As you can see in the picture, he would stand before the king every day. And every day, before the king would eat his meal, first it would be tested by Nehemiah. Nehemiah would take everything that the king would drink. He would drink a little bit. Everything he would eat, he would eat a little bit. Why? Because uh, the, the king trusted the taste of Nehemiah. 
No. Because if a person was trying to poison or kill the king with poison, he would put it in his food or in his drink. Nehemiah himself was just a servant. The servant's life, they thought, was not important the same as the king. If a servant died because of drinking or eating poison, it was okay. The king was safe and he would not eat or drink that. And so uh, Nehemiah, every day before every meal that the king would eat himself, Nehemiah would test all of the food and all of the drink. He would test it. The king would watch him for a little bit. So really the king and Nehemiah became, they got to know each other. I would not say they were friends, but they got to know each other well because every day, morning, noon, night, the king saw and watched Nehemiah to see if he would die after he ate or drank anything. That was the responsibility of Nehemiah. Nehemiah every day would go in before the king and the king was used to seeing his face. Now from what the Bible teaches us, Nehemiah always had a friendly, happy face when he stood before the king. But something happened. Nehemiah heard about the situation in Jerusalem. He heard maybe about his friend Ezra who had gone back to rebuild the temple itself. Maybe he heard, and he heard, by the way, from his, from his brother Hananiah. And, and Hananiah, his brother, told him that not only was the temple had fallen down and now rebuilt again, but the walls around the temple had fallen down. And it was in a horrible situation. And Nehemiah's heart was touched. Now, let me say, your heart may not have been touched by that. My, my heart may not have been touched by that. But Nehemiah's heart was touched so deeply that it made him to mourn. It says, I want you to see what the Bible says about what Nehemiah, when he heard the news about the wall being collapsed in Jerusalem, the Bible says this, And it came to pass when I heard these words, the words about the wall being collapsed, when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted, and prayed before the God of heaven. When Nehemiah heard about the walls around the temple being collapsed in Jerusalem, his heart was so touched that he wept. And, and really, it continued for a few days. He, he wept and he mourned and he, fe he didn't eat himself. I'm sure he, he followed his responsibility to the king and he would test the food there. But he did not eat himself. And he mourned, he was, he was sad with what had happened in Jerusalem. And during that time, he went in and he stood before the king. And the king saw Nehemiah. And he looked at his face and he said, you are not the same. Something's wrong with you. What's, what's wrong with you? Nehemiah, he could not hide. He, he felt so mournful and discouraged about what was happening in Jerusalem and so he honestly he told the king well a uh, king there in Jerusalem my home area uh, my friend Ezra went back and rebuilt the temple but the walls around the temple have fallen down and really it touches my heart and the king looked at Nehemiah he saw a good man he, uh, Nehemiah was a trusted man to the king. The king had been alive and healthy ever since Nehemiah was his cup bearer. And so he trusted him. And he looked at him and he thought, it's not good to have a person who is protecting me to be discouraged. So he thought, tell you what I will do. I'm going to give you a letter of authority to go back and rebuild the temple walls around Jerusalem. And uh, Nehemiah, really? You're, you give me, you're giving me permission to go back? And the king said, yes, you can go back. And Nehemiah, he was smart. Nehemiah said, um, King, 
you, you, you've allowed me to go back. Will you also write, I need some things. I need some wood. I'm going to need some things to help to build the wall. Will you, will you sign that too? And the king said, approved. And he signed the letter. And it listed things that Nehemiah would need when he went back. And so Nehemiah himself, he went back to Jerusalem to rebuild the wall around Jerusalem. Uh, it's interesting because he in, invited some people to go with him back to help to work. He, he needed workers. And so they went back to Jerusalem. But it, it was interesting. Before Nehemiah stood before the people, at night, one night, he rode on his donkey and he went and he looked and he looked and he saw the situation that they were facing. He saw where the wall had broken down and what they would need to do. And he looked and looked and looked. Nehemiah, this book in our Bible, it's a wonderful story about how God used a man with the skills he had to be able to accomplish a great thing. Now me, if you were to ask me to rebuild a wall, you would be in trouble. And that wall, maybe I would build it again, but it would fall very quickly. Why? Because I don't know what I'm doing with rebuilding a wall. But Nehemiah knew he had experience. And when he rode in there on the donkey that night, he didn't want any other person with him. He looked, maybe he had paper and pen. He was writing things down. Maybe he measured some things, wrote. But what, what he was doing was, he was getting prepared himself to be able to lead others in rebuilding the wall. I want to encourage you. God will touch your heart about some things that, that God wants you to do. No other person may have that touch on their heart, but you have it. And you have responsibility then to go and to see what needs to be done, to find out, to write down the things that need to be done, and then to go back and lead other people to help to finish that, that work. And that's what Nehemiah did here. He, he gathered a group of people uh, from Israel to help to rebuild the wall and do the thing God touched his heart to do. Now the other people who were responsible to go with him and to help, maybe they did not have the initial burden. But Nehemiah's burden was then passed on to all the other people who came to help. And so some person maybe was skilled with wood, and an, another person was skilled with stone, and another person was skilled with measure. I don't know. But Nehemiah, Nehemiah took his burden and passed it on to each person. And this time that he spent there at night looking over things helped him to know what needed to be done next. So Nehemiah, after he studied and looked all over the situation, he knew, well, that, that guy, he can do that, and he will be able to do that, and he'll be able to do that, and over that, that person can help with this. And, and in, in Nehemiah's mind, he was, he was picking people and making a plan. And when he gave a person responsibility of what he wanted them to do, and, and in some parts, you'll see as you would study and read the book of Nehemiah, you will see that he chose some groups of people and gave responsibility to one specific section of the wall. They were responsible. They would build and build and build and they finished. If they finished, they would go help another person. But each group had their own responsibility. And Nehemiah was the leader. He was the planner. Uh, you know, sometimes, all of us, sometimes we wish we could be the leader. It's not easy to be the leader many times. It's good when you can trust the leader God has placed over you. When that happens, if you go to a good church with a, a good pastor, trust your pastor and follow his authority and leadership as long as he's following the Word of God. If he goes away from the Word of God, then you, you need to stop. But Nehemiah was being led by the Spirit of God, and he was obedient and he gave and gave and gave responsibilities. Well, let's see what the Bible says. The Bible says in Nehemiah chapter 2, 
that Nehemiah told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they, the people, said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. That is a wonderful verse. Nehemiah stands before these groups of people that he has picked out to help with the wall. He stands before them and he tells them what God touched his heart to do. He tells them, uh, I, my burden began here. I talked with the king. The king gave me the letters. I have the letters here of approval. And he sent me with authority from him. And uh, I've looked over at night and I've seen the wall. And here's what God touched my heart to do. And he tells the people specific to each of them. Those people say, I love the phrase, let us, let us, let us rise up and build. Let's not waste any more time. You know there's a time in every situation. God, for, he starts with giving a burden to a person. And then that person studies and plans and that burden becomes a plan. But there's a time when that plan must begin to have action. Too many people today have a burden, yes. They think about, they develop a plan, yes. But then the plan lays on a desk somewhere, or a person says, I'm going to pray about that, and they forget and forget and forget, and that plan never happens. But these people said, let us rise up and build. Let's go, let's do it. And so the workers were given specific responsibilities themselves. They took their responsibilities seriously and they began to build the wall. You might say, oh wow, everything's going perfect. The wall is being built, every person is in fellowship with each other, and everything is wonderful. I'm going to tell you, anytime God begins a work here on the earth, the devil is going to show up and try to discourage people. And that is exactly what happened. The same here happened with Nehemiah. Two men, Sanballat and Tobiah, two men, they show up and they're against Nehemiah. Why? I don't know. I don't think they had a good reason themselves. Uh, really, just the devil wanted to stop the work of God, and he chose two people. These two men volunteered, and they stood to be against and oppose. They wanted to oppose Nehemiah. It started right, right from the beginning of the story. You can see them in chapter 4. What did they do first? Well, the people who are enemies of God, first they start small. They, they begin by mocking uh, the men would stand back and they were watching people building the wall and they were cutting and building and, and putting stones and different things. And they stood back and they said, ah, that wall is so weak, a fox, a fox could come and touch it and it'll fall over. And they mocked. You know, this still, this still happens today. When you decide God calls you to do something and touches your heart to do something and you surrender to do it, the first thing that happens is some person is going to meet you and say, you, you're not qualified enough to do that. You're not good enough to do that. You, you're, not, you're not the right person to fit that. Listen to me. When God touches your heart, don't listen to any other person. You obey God until God says, stop. You keep going. When God calls us, He will not change His mind until the job is finished. So the first thing that happened, people mocked them. You can see that in chapter 4. Uh, but I want you to see what the, workers, what the workers did. It's interesting. They could have stopped the work. They did not stop the work. It says here in chapter 4, verse 6, So we built the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto 
half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. The people had a decision. The people had an endurance. The people decided we will work. We're not listening to the people who are complaining against us. Do you have a mind to work? Do you? Do I? Are we willing to uh, hear the mocking and the criticism and just ignore it and keep on going? Or do we stop? Do we pause? Do we come off? Do we get sidetracked and, and discuss with people? It's not a time for discussion. The people heard the mockers to them. They heard the criticism. They heard about foxes will knock it over. And they ignored. The Bible says that they continued to build the wall and the wall was joined together till halfway finished. Why? Because the people had a mind, a determination that they were going to work. And they worked. The other people were mocking. Ah, they ignored. They just, kept, they just kept working. They just kept cutting the wood. They, they just kept putting on the stones. They just kept measuring. They, they just kept moving forward. They didn't listen. They didn't stop to listen. It's good advice for us today. Uh, the enemy even came to the place where they threatened the workers. They said, we're going we're to kill you if you keep on working. They got serious now. They changed from mocking and they became threatening to them. We're going to kill you if you keep on going. And the workers, what did they do? Now were they afraid and they stopped? Oh no. They continued to pray. They continued to work. They knew that Sanballat and Tobiah, those two men, they knew that they were there behind trying to stop the work of building the wall again. So Nehemiah made a plan. Nehemiah was smart. He said, okay, men, he called them together. Okay, listen, we're, going, we're not going to stop working. Here's what we'll do. We're going to divide in half. Half of you work. You, you just keep working. The other half, you guys, you take sword, spears, and you wait, and you guard. You watch. You're guards. You watch. So this half, you work. And then you switch. And you guard, and you work. But don't stop the work. I want to. It's important for us to understand. The work cannot stop. The work is more important than the people who complain against it. If God has called you to teach a Sunday school class or children or, or just to meet one-on-one -on -one with a person and do discipleship things, training, don't become discouraged and quit. The work is important. If the Lord has touched your heart to go and witness to your neighbor, don't become discouraged and quit. Keep on, keep on, keep on. That's what they did here. And I want you to see, the people said this. I love that. Our God shall fight for us. Hey, when you know I'm doing the work of God, whose responsibility is it to fight? Yours or God's? If you're doing what God called you to do, God is responsible, not you. And God will fight better than you can fight. Sometimes we get so, we get distracted and we get off to the side because we allow the world pressuring us to get us off track. And God wants us to stay focused. He will do the fighting for us. Sometimes in your, in your country, you feel like uh, Christians are being put down. We need to fight. No, we don't need to fight. God will fight for us. God is in control. God is more powerful than we are. Allow God to fight for you. God is ready and God is willing. There, there was a third. First, the people mocked. Second, they threatened to kill them. But third, something happened back in the other nations where they were living. The families of the people who had volunteered to come and work, their families were left back there in the other country. What happened was people back there began to take advantage of them and their families. 
uh, the husband, the father, was not there to work there. He was here on the wall working. And we, he would hear from his family there, well, now we have, we have no money because you're there working. And people came and demand that we pay them back. And they're going to take our children to become slaves. Nehemiah really got upset. And Nehemiah told the people back there, you will not do that. These people are here building the wall for you. Don't touch their families. Nehemiah was strong. You see, first the, the attack came from mocking. Ah, oh, that was simple. Second, it was a little deeper. They, they, they threatened that they were going to kill them. That's serious. Third, maybe was the worst. It came from their own people, the Jews who were putting this, this burden on them. You need, to, you need to pay us or we're going to take your children to become slaves. But Nehemiah stood strong. The last, the last at attack that came goes back to those first two. Sanballat and Tobiah. They came back again the last time they come. It's in Nehemiah chapter 6. They come and they... They say to Nehemiah, um, can you come down? We want to talk with you. We just want to discuss some things. They were nice. They were friendly. They looked good. But really, in their heart, did they have good or evil? Which? Evil. They wanted to pull Nehemiah from the wall. They wanted to distract him from the purpose that God had given him. And they wanted him to come down to meet with them. And Nehemiah's answer to them is wonderful. Nehemiah said this. Nehemiah himself did not go down to meet with them. The verse says in chapter 6, verse 3, And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and come down to you? Nehemiah said uh, to these two men, I, I'm, I'm doing a great work. It's not silly. It's not wasted time. I'm doing what God touched my heart to do. When I first heard about the wall collapsing, I mourned. Do you remember? I wept and mourned and could, could not even eat. And I was sad for the first time before the king. And this work is important. I cannot come down to meet with you. I refuse. I'm not going to give up this important work to come down and discuss something with you. And I want to tell you today, it's important for us to stay focused on what God calls us to do. In Nehemiah's case, he wanted, he knew God called him to finish this wall. God wanted this wall to be rebuilt again, to be, to be made like new, to protect the temple itself. And Nehemiah knew this work is important. These two guys... They want me, they want to distract me. They want to pull me from the work of God. And Nehemiah became spiritually stubborn. He refused. He would not go down with them. I'm, I wonder about you and me. When God touches my heart to do something, I need to become spiritually stubborn and not allow any person to pull me away from what God has called me to do. Uh, God called me 30 plus years ago. 30 plus years ago, God touched my heart to help deaf people. Oh, in those beginning days, I was lousy. My sign language was awkward, lousy. It was horrible. But I knew God had touched my heart, and so I needed to stay and stay and stay. Now here, 30 plus years later, it's not that I'm good, but God is faithful. And I'm, my plan is to continue in the work with helping deaf people until the rapture comes or I die, one of those two. I want to stay on my wall because the work God called me to do with deaf people is a great work. And I cannot come down. 
I don't want to back up. I don't want to get distracted and pulled to one side. I want to stay focused and faithful all the way through my life. I hope you're the same as me. This story has a wonderful, wonderful, amazing ending. I want you to see. Nehemiah, the Bible says in, in Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 15, So the wall was finished in, 20, in the 20 and 5th day of the month. Do you know what it means? They finished building the wall completely in 52 days. 52 days. That's amazing. These people, in less than 7 weeks... They finished the whole wall that, that was repaired to its original place. It started, if you think, it started with one man having his heart touched, Nehemiah. That one man went to the king and the second man's heart was touched to allow. He gave permission for them to go, permission for them to go. They left and a group of people came with Nehemiah. Now the burden of one has grown to two, has grown to many, many people. And that burden result in what? A finished wall in 52 days. It's an amazing story. The wall, again, was back to what God planned for it to be. Well, you say, oh, it's only a wall. A wall is not important. Hey, the wall was important to God. The wall was, became Im important to Nehemiah. And the wall itself repre represented not a wall, but God's people doing God's work in God's strength and in God's time. 52 days. It was amazing. I'm sure Sanballat and Tobiah were discouraged because they wanted to stop the building of the wall, but they could not. And God allowed His people to be successful. I think we should stop and pause and praise God for faithful workers. And today I hope you are a faithful worker as well. Now I want to I want to close with you today. But I want you to think about, for yourself, what is the great work that God called you to do? You say, well, I, I don't know. I don't feel anything great work. Maybe you need to ask God, God, I want to do a great work for you. If you know what God called you to do, then be faithful. And don't wait and don't put it off. Commit your whole heart to God and allow Him to work through you. I want to encourage you. Maybe you have a feeling of weakness and maybe people have complained and criticized you for doing, for doing what God touched your heart to do. Ignore those people. Remember, you have a great work to do. Don't come down to argue with people about it. Just be faithful to God. Uh, if God called you to teach a Sunday school class, then faithfully go and teach that class this next week. And don't, don't put it off. Don't, don't give up. Don't become discouraged. Stay and stay and stay. God has a great wor work that He wants to do with you. I hope you will be like Nehemiah and be stubborn, spiritually stubborn, and do what God called you to do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the example of this man, Nehemiah. We thank you that he was faithful and stayed and that you allow that wall to be rebuilt again there in Jerusalem. Help us who are watching today to accept the responsibility to do, to do what you call us to do. Help us not to become distracted and pulled away from the things that you have for us. But help us be faithful to you today and this next week. We pray that you would use the example of Nehemiah to encourage and to challenge us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, next week it's going to be exciting. We're going to meet a man who's famous in the Bible. His name is Daniel. Daniel. His sign name. And so uh, I hope you'll come back next week and meet with me. It's going to be exciting to learn the story about his life. I will see you next week.